Hi everyone, Anthony here from Level Up Your Teaching. Today we're going to look at a completely free video conferencing software called Big Blue Button. We're going to start by creating an account to looking at every different function of this tool. So without further ado, let's start with our tutorial. So the first thing that we need to do is go on and type bigbluebutton.org and we will be taken to the main page. From there, at the top right corner, click Try Now. You'll be taken to a page giving you a few information about Big Blue Button. Again, at the top right corner, let's go and click Sign Up to create our account. Here, you'll be given a few different options. Just, more, just like most of those uh, platforms, you'll be able to use your social media to sign in or your email, which is what I'm going to do now. Let's go on then, type my email, levelupyourteaching at gmail.com and type a password. And then we have to confirm that we're not robots. So let's go on and click those statues and we're ready to go. Click sign up. Now Big Blue Button is going to send you a verification email and it should probably arrive in a few seconds just like it did. So let's go on, see that email and right in the middle there is the button for verifying your account. So click there so that we can go on and start our first meeting. So as you can see right at the top, our account has been verified and we're ready to sign in to access our account. So for that, we need to use our email we used and the password we typed. So, uh, what I really like about Big Blue Button is that the dashboard, the main page that you see when you log in is very intuitive. It really has all you need to just go on and start with your first meeting. So let's go on, have a look at it. So as you can see, right at the top, we have the home button, which takes you over to this page, the all recordings, which we're going to look at later, and your profile button, which will take you into your profile if you need any help to a page where you can ask for help and obviously the sign out button. So what I would like you to have a look at is that home room. Automatically, a big blue button creates a room for you. What that means is that it gives you the ability to create multiple rooms. So as you can see here, it says create room. That means that if you have multiple classes or one-to-ones and you want to keep your lessons or your classes or your one-to-ones to a certain room, then you can create that. So let's say, for example, that we want to create a group for our B2 level. So let's go on, click create room and then put as name B2. You're given a few different options here. It says generate an optional room access code, which normally I don't use, but if you want to go on and add that extra layer of security, you can do that. Uh, and again, some options for when your students are uh, entering the room, like muting them when they join, uh, require approval before joining, allowing users to start the meeting, and so on. So let's go on and create this room. So there we are. We've already created one room for our B2 level students. Right above that, you see that there is an invitation code. So what you really need to do is just copy paste that into a mail, an email, and just send it to your students. And with that link, they'll be able to join their the meeting from their web browser, namely their Google Chrome or Firefox or uh, Microsoft Edge. So 
Uh, that's all for the recording bit. Now, right at the bottom, you see it says room recordings. So when we are going to record our sessions, this is where all the recordings will show up. So uh, one more thing that I forgot to mention about the rooms is that it's very easy to actually change from one room to another. So as you can see now, we have two options. We have the B2 option and the home room option. So all you need to do to change from one to the other is just click. And as you can see, the link, the invitation link changed. And also right at the top, it now says home room. Here, you can actually go on again and change those settings that we looked at before when we created the room. So if you've changed your mind, you can always go back and change the settings. So let's go back, uh, select our B2 room and let's go and start using big blue button. So there we are. And the first thing that big blue button is asking us is how to join the room, how to join the meeting. And we're giving two different options, whether we would like to join with our microphone or just with our speakers so that we can only listen. So normally if you're a student or a teacher, you would like to use your microphone, of course. And let's go on and do that. Right. Now, because Big Blue Button is using your web browser for your meeting, your web browser needs to ask you for permission before it allows Big Blue Button to use your microphone and your webcam. So right here at the top left corner, you see that Big Blue Button is asking us, is asking our browser whether it can use our microphone. Let's go on and click allow. And you will see here that Big Blue Button is doing a test so that you can make sure that your audio is working. So normally you would hear your own self talking, but because I've muted my audio so that you don't hear my voice twice, you can't hear it now. But normally you should be able to hear your voice. And if you do, click yes. Now, again, because I'm using my webcam, uh, I'm not able to use my webcam on Big Blue Button now, but if you were to use your webcam, you would be taken through a similar process. So you would click on that button here that says share webcam. And then again, at the top left corner, your web browser would ask you whether you would like Big Blue Button to use your webcam. You would click allow and then you would go on and be able and start using your webcam right away. So a few different things going on here. Uh, the first thing that I would like to show you is your whiteboard, which is one of the most important tools, of course. As you can see here, Big Blue Button is giving us some information about the software. And right at the bottom of the whiteboard, there is an option that says slide one. If we click here, you can see that there are multiple slides for you to use depending on the volume of uh, notes that you have. Let's go on and click slide number two. And as you can see, this slide is blank for you to use in your lessons or your meetings. Now, at the right hand side, we have three different options. The first one is the tool that we would like to use. We have a few different options here. We have the text option, lines, ellipse, uh, triangles, rectangle, and pencil. Now, the one I use the most, of course, is the text one. And for you to use the text, first you have to choose the area that you would like to write in. You create a box, and from there you start typing. Now, again, you have a few different options. You can change the font size from the smallest being 16 to the biggest being 36. Let's go and make it pretty big. And then we can change the colors, of course. 
we don't have a lot of different options, but it's, it's a good variety for a lesson. And of course, if we would like to remove the annotation, we can just click here and it will remove the text that we created. Now, another tool that I really like using with my students is the line tool. So let's say, for example, that we are doing a group task and I want my students to write their answers on the whiteboard. We can go on, select the line tool and divide the whiteboard into four equal parts, if we have four groups, of course. Now, each group would have their own box to write the answers. What is great about this is that the students would be able to see each other's answers, uh, get ideas from that, receive peer feedback without even talking, which I think is a great thing. Of course, uh, one thing to remember is that Big blue button by default doesn't let your students or the participants use the whiteboard. And in order to do that, we need to click that very last option on the right hand side, the turn multi user whiteboard on. And by clicking that, as you can see now, right next to my tool, it says my name. So that's great because you can see who is writing where and of course your students now would be able to write their answers now another great thing about big blue button is that it lets you upload powerpoint presentations and videos in order to do that we have to go on and click that plus button right below the whiteboard so as you can see we have three different options to start a poll to upload a presentation and to share an external video. Let's go on and click this one to share an external video. Now, we're doing a warmer activity, for example, and we want, our, we want to show our students a video. We don't have to share a screen and try to find the YouTube video. Then there are other video, YouTube videos coming up, which will distract our students. And what we can do with this one is just copy paste the URL that we have for the video that we want to show them. So what we need to do is go on and paste that URL over here in the box and then click share a new video. And as you can see, right away, it shows the video that we've selected. Now, I believe that this is a great feature and it just, it makes something like searching a video a lot more easier and less distracting for the students. Now, by clicking the plus icon again, we can stop sharing this video and then we will be taken back into our whiteboard. Now, the second option is the upload a presentation option. Here, we have two different options to upload it. We can either drag and drop it or browse our files and then select it, which is what I'm going to do. As you can see here, I've got a presentation of the infinity of purpose, which I was doing the other day. And if you see here, it says to be uploaded. Now, my first mistake with Big Blue Button is that I thought it was going to upload it on its own. However, what you have to do is first select it through the tick uh, icon over here and then click upload. And only then it will start uploading it. Now, there are other two different options that I would like to discuss over here. The first one is pretty important. It allows other people to download your presentation if you click this button. Now, everyone would be able to download it. And by unclicking that, of course, they won't be. Uh, let's go on and click it so that I can show you where the icon for downloading is so that you can direct your students if you need to. And of course, the delete presentation button uh, if you would like to remove it. Now let's go on, click confirm to bring my presentation up. Now, as I told you, I'm going to show you the icon that lets your students or participants download the presentation. And it's this one at the bottom left corner of your presentation. If you click there, your students, your participants would be able to download the original presentation. And of course, by clicking right or left, you'll be able to move around your slides. Over here, 
I have some incorrect sentences uh, about the infinitive of purpose that my students had to correct, of course. Now, another thing that I would like to show you is how to bring your whiteboard back. It's not super intuitive, so I think it's a good thing to have a look at it. By clicking the plus icon, you can click upload a presentation again. And remember, we have this default.pdf. This is actually our whiteboard. And if you tick the circle over here, it will bring it back. Now, one thing about PowerPoint presentations. Uh, a few of you asked me before in a previous video that I had created about Big Blue Button, how to transfer, uh, how to embed PowerPoint presentations into Big Blue Button that have animations. And unfortunately, this is impossible. Uh, what Big Blue Button does, it converts your PowerPoint files into PDF, which means that all your animations will become static images. So let's go on, click Confirm to bring the whiteboard back. So that's all pretty much about the whiteboard. I think it actually works pretty well. It's lag-free, which is really important, and everything is super intuitive. Now, the other thing that I would like to show you is the public chat. On the top left corner, you can see there is the public chat button, and if you click there, it will remove it and make your screen bigger, and by clicking back, it will bring it up. Uh, at the bottom, we can type our message, click enter or the arrow icon to send it, and then we have three different options right here at the top related to the chat. By clicking there, you can either save your uh, chat box, copy it, or clear it which I think is pretty useful if you have, for example, an activity that you did in the chat box and you've given some feedback and you would just like your students to take that back home so that they'll be able to study it. So you can just click save and send it over to them or put it on your Google Classroom or Edmondo or whatever you prefer using. Now, one function that I love using is the shared notes. It's right below the public chat. And the shared note allows you to uh, write things here that your students would be able to see. And you have a few different formatting options like bold, italics, underline, and strike through. Now, I've used this a lot with my students to give feedback. Let's say, for example, they're doing a speaking task and I don't want to interrupt them. I would give them feedback here while they're doing the speaking activity. And I think it works amazingly for emergent language too. So let's say you, have, you want to do your vocabulary teaching. And normally, if you're in a class, you would have all your vocabulary at one side of your board with your phonetic alphabet, with your definition, with underlined stresses. Now, the shared notes allows you to have that similar part of your whiteboard in big blue button. And what's great about it is that you can actually export that as a Word document or a PDF and then send it over to your students which I think it really increases the value of your online teaching. Finally, uh, if you click over here on your name, you see that you have a few different statuses that you can choose from, like a way to raise hand uh, to show that you're happy to give thumbs up or thumbs down. And again, that's a great way to interact with your students or better your students to interact with you. So that's all pretty much what I would like to show you about Big Blue Button. And I think we're ready to head back. Thanks again for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.